Hello, class. Uh, I am not going to really be on that long because this is lab zero. And I shouldn't say lab zero, lab one. <laughs> I was thinking about making lab zero and then, but you know what, you started zero, so what the heck, what's the difference? So I decided uh, this is lab one and this really has to do with the first several lectures that you've watched on dimensions and units. And I wanna bring everybody up to speed on dimensions and units. It's going to be something that you will be tested on on test one. Uh, one out of the three problems uh, will be on dimensions and units. Um, on the midterm exam, you'll be tested. And on the final exam, you'll be tested on understanding of dimensions and units and how to figure out what the actual units are that are being used in equations. And uh, of course, that's something that's good to know. And it's also uh, good when you're working through uh, conference papers that you're reading or journal papers that you're reading. Uh, that'll come in very handy. So I'm going to switch over now to the uh, to the the lecture board, <laughs> if you want to call it that, because that's really what I use it for. And we're going to look at a couple equations. Now we already have gone through in the in the lectures. I'm not going to go back and actually list uh, all of the various things. I am going to do it for certain derived units that we've got in these two example equations that I'm going to do for us up at the top. And all of these equations that I've got down here, now I've listed these not necessarily in their in combination of primary units. I've listed these, this is a Coulomb, right? Charge is a Coulomb, second time is seconds, current is amps, energy is joules, uh, Voltage is volts, power is in watts, the small p is pressure, and that's going to be in pascals, right? Those are all combinations. If you look at these, these are all derived. These are nicknames for derived units in the SI system, right? In fact, even area is a, a, a derived unit. That's not, area certainly isn't a primary unit. That's a combination of uh, things. So I'm leaving these to you with the lectures that you've seen up until now or from, you know, using the book or whatever uh, sources you could use on the internet to find out what the combination of primary units are for uh, each of these different derived, like ohms, right? Uh, what are the combination of primary units for ohms? So what you're going to do is you're going to take all of these right here and give me the combination, the simplified fractional uh, combination, the most simplified, let's put that, the most simplified fractional combination of primary units. Oh, it just fit that on there. Of primary units. So that's what we want. Most simplified fractional combination of primary units that describe the answer for each of these equations. So A through M. So I want you to put that on a sheet of paper and I want you to write those out and tell and, and give me um, the combination of primary units for all of those and then uh, email it to me, right? At my email address on the syllabus, all right? Okay, so, but before I do that, what I wanna do is I wanna do a couple examples and look at uh, what the combination of primary units would be for these two rather complicated uh, equations. In fact, this might be the first time that you've seen mu and epsilon, I don't know, <clears throat> you know, Mu, of course, being permeability and epsilon being permittivity. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll talk about uh, the units associated with both of those. Uh, Henry's per meter for permeability and Farad's per meter for permittivity, right? Of course, Farad is a unit of capacitance and Henry is a unit of inductance. So that now. Let's look at this equation up here first. And as I do this, I wanna point out, you know, what are we gonna use here? This is voltage. So we know that a volt is a kilogram meter squared 
per seconds cubed amp. That's the combination of primary units for a volt. And uh, I'll refer you back to my lectures on dimensions and units that you've had up till now to see that, yes, uh, the, the, when, when you go through the whole derivation, that would be the combination of units that provide voltage. So let's just do that first one. Now that's d squared v over dt squared, right? So where's the square? The square is on the d, isn't it? It's not on the v. But down here, the square is on the dt. So I know that this is going to be, first let's put the volts in there, kilogram meters squared over seconds cubed amp, right? That is the volt that's in the numerator. And then we've got dt squared, and t of course is time. So even a small amount of time, let's say a microsecond squared, is still gonna be seconds squared, isn't it? So that's what we've got next to it, seconds squared in the denominator, right? Now let's do the next one. I've got r. Now when we think about r, as you know from the lectures, resistance is in ohms and it's a kilogram meter squared per seconds cubed amp squared, right? So we know that that resistance is that from, from the lectures that we've had. So let's put that in there. So that would be a kilogram meter squared per seconds cubed amp squared, and that's our resistance. Now, many of you are saying, hey, wait a second, because of dimensional homogeneity, because of dimensional homogeneity, whatever the units are for this first um, uh, quotient in the summation should be the same for all of the others, right? So d squared v over dt squared, should this should have exactly the same units as r over l dv dt. Let's see if that's true. So that's R. Let's extend our, our thing out a little bit. And what's L? Well, we know that L is inductance and that inductance is a kilogram meter squared over second squared amp squared, right? So let's write that in. So we've got kilogram meter squared over second squared amp squared. Right, and we put it in there upside down because L is on bottom. So this would really be kilogram meter squared over second squared amp squared, but then if it's in the denominator of the denominator, it goes into the numerator, right? Of course it does. And then we have dV, so we've still got V, so that's going to be a kilogram meter squared over seconds cubed amp. And we've got, let me just put, parentheses around that, and then we still have our dt, which is seconds, All right? Let's do that last one too. So now in this last one, and it should have exactly the same units as the other two. We've got voltage, which is a kilogram meter squared over seconds cubed amp. So let's put voltage in there because it's in the numerator. And then we've got L on the bottom, and L is going to be a kilogram meter squared over second squared amp squared, right? That's our, I'm gonna extend that out a little bit. That is our L, and we put it in upside down, of course, because it's in the denominator, right? Now C, well, we know from the lectures that we've had that when I derived C, capacitance, the capacitance is an amp squared seconds to the fourth over kilogram meter squared, right? That's the combination of primary units in the SI system that describe a farad, right? A farad is the unit of capacitance and it's in the denominator. So it would be an amp squared seconds to the fourth kilogram meter squared. And let's put parentheses around that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the red pen and I'm going to uh, cancel out <clears throat> some of these primary units that we've got through here. So let's do that. 
So, you know, uh, really, when you look at this first one, I'm going to get kilogram meters squared over seconds to the fifth amps. Did I, did I copy that correctly? <laughs> Let me see what I get over here now. I get uh, seconds uh, to the fifth. That's what I'm looking for. Let's see. We've got two up here. We've got three, three, one. So that's seven minus two. Yep, that's what it gives me. I'm just going to, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've sort of run out of room here. But uh, let me just put the, the answer that we get here. And I think that everybody can see. I'm going to cancel other things out. But it's going to be kilogram meters squared per seconds to the fifth amps, right? Does everybody see that? I'm just going to pop that in there because we may use this bottom one uh, to do the other uh, example. So I'm just going to sort of cut that off. But now let's cancel out some of the other units that we find uh, in the other uh, things here, right? So I think you can see that the kilograms and the kilograms there, they cancel out. And then uh, the seconds squared cancels out with all but one of those seconds. So that leaves seconds to the fifth in the denominator. That's what we've got down there. How about amps now? Well, those amps squared are going to cancel out, leaving only one amp in the denominator. And then uh, the meters squared. Well, these meters squared can cancel out with those meters squared, only leaving the last meters squared in the denominator. So kilogram meters squared over seconds to the fifth amps. How about the third one here that we've got? Well, once again, the kilograms are canceling out. Not too much problem there. We've got seconds to the fourth and seconds cubed, so that's seconds to the fifth. And we've got seconds uh, up top, so I'm going to get rid of all but one of those seconds down there with that. Then we've got amp squared and amp squared that cancels out, so we've got um, and then I've got meters squared that cancels out with the meters squared. So I get kilogram meters squared per seconds to the fifth amps in all, uh, in all of those different things that are being added together. So we have dimensional homogeneity all throughout this equation. Uh, the units for this are the same units for this are the same units for this, and rightfully so, and that, that's what the units are. All right, <clears throat> that's one example. The second example that I want to give you is for one over the square root of, of that. So what I want to do is I want to set this up for a square root right off the bat. And I'm going to put in what I call my major fraction because we've got Henry's per meter. Now when I say Henry's per meter, what is that? Well, we know that a Henry is a kilogram meter squared. I'm going to leave that there. Kilogram meter squared over amp squared seconds squared, right? Now, if I've got that per meter, right? So I'm just going to put per meter. What does that do? Well, that obviously gets rid of one of the meters in the numerator, right? The meter that it's being divided by is going to cancel out one of those. So that gives me a kilogram meter per amp squared second squared. Right? So kilogram meter per amp squared second squared. All right. And then I'll tell you, I can't really write this out, but I think everybody can see that if I have farads per meter, Right, a farad is an amp squared seconds to the fourth over kilogram meter squared, and then I'm dividing it by a meter. That kilogram meter squared is going to get into kilogram meters cubed. So I'll have an amp squared seconds to the fourth over kilogram meters cubed for epsilon. And so that's what I want to do. Both of those are in the denominator now. So let's write them out. So I've got uh, the first one, Henry's per meter, is going to be a kilogram meter uh, per amp squared second squared, right? Well, I gave myself too much room here, it looks like. 
Um, and then uh, my epsilon is an amp squared seconds to the fourth over kilogram meters cubed, right? So we'll put that in there. And then what I wanted to do was to put a line here and put a square root sign there. And the way to fix that up is just to take that last little black card off. There we go. All right. <clears throat> and so uh, if we do that, we can then uh, simplify that a little bit, can't we? Because I can cancel some of those things out. For instance, the amp squareds cancel out with the amp squareds. The kilograms cancel out with the kilograms, don't they? Now I've still got this meters, and that's going to change this to a two meters squared. And then these seconds are gonna cancel out with all but two of those. So what I end up getting after I've made all those cancellations is meters squared per second squared, all taken to the square root. I think everybody can see how that works out. That's just gonna give us meters per second. And in fact, uh, the permeability, um, uh, or one over permeability uh, of outer space times uh, permittivity of outer space taken to the square root equals the speed of light, right? And the speed of light is 300 C equals 300 times 10 to the six meters per second. There you go. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to uh, do all of these and email them to me as soon as you can or whenever I told you to do it in the meetings that we're having for the course. All right, because I'm, I'm doing these a little bit earlier. I haven't really put all of the organization because I haven't done all the lectures or all the laboratories yet. But this is uh, the first lab. And uh, do all of those, it should be relatively easy, and then get those into me. See you at the next lab, which actually I've already done. <laughs>